All right, all right, I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. A1 Pictures does it again with Blue Exorcist, man. Yo, it's been a while. It's been a while since Blue Exorcist has been around. If I'm correct, I think it's been around five years since the first Blue Exorcist aired. Now, regarding Blue Exorcist, I know that a lot of people, you know, have mixed opinions on this series. Some say it's really enjoyable. Some say, you know, it's your typical uh, generic shonen, while also being that it has filler in it. Uh, I think around episode 18 is when the filler started with the series, so it kind of breaks off from the canon material that was in the manga, so it's really not that good. But me personally, despite knowing all that, I still go on the side with, you know, the entertainment route. I actually thought that Blue Exorcist Season 1, despite its filler, and despite it being a typical shonen, I actually really, really enjoyed the show. And I actually have the manga right up there, right? Let me see. Mm, there, right there. I have a whole lot of the manga right now. I believe I have up to volumes 1 through 14 of, of Blue Exorcist. So that tells you that I do enjoy the anime and I do enjoy the manga. Now, before we get into Blue Exorcist Season 2's plot about the Impure King arc, what it is about, I have to commend A1 Pictures for the phenomenal job on the animation. The animation is definitely the best that we have seen this season so far, and I know that's really not saying much because not, you know, everything has come out yet, but from what we have seen so far, you can tell that the quality of the animation of Blue Exorcist Season 2 is definitely great. Like, the animation looks so much better than Blue Exorcist Season 1. Now, Blue Exorcist Season 1 definitely had some good animation toward it, but comparing it to this, like, Blue Exorcist Season 2 blows it out of the water. The, the way on the aesthetic of the show, on how it looks, the smoothness, how it, you know, flows with the characters, I love it a lot. Like... It, it, it reminds me of the Blue Exorcist movie. If any of you have seen the movie, it almost looks exactly as the quality of the a level of animation within the movie. So you can tell that a big budget, you know, was produced for this uh, second season of Blue Exorcist because the movie to Blue Exorcist had a decent budget to it as well and looked a whole lot better than season one. But the movie... The movie's animation looks exactly like uh, the second season of Blue Exorcist in this first episode. So this definitely tells you something that they definitely have had a higher budget regarding Blue Exorcist and they were well prepared to make the animation look as great as they possibly could. Now regarding the music, the music to Blue Exorcist is, you know, great in general. I mean, Hiroyuki Sawano ended up composing the first season of Blue Exorcist OST and he is back on board in Blue Exorcist Season 2. So that pretty much tells you right then and there that, you know, the music is great. The soundtrack is just as great as I remember. Oh, and let's not forget, speaking about the soundtrack, the opening. At the very end of the episode, we see the opening of Blue Exorcist Season 2. And the band that played in Season 1's opening. Opening 1 was done by Overworld. I haven't heard them in a very long time, to be quite honest with you. And just to hear them again for this opening of Blue Exorcist Season 2... Yo, I was, I like, yo, let's go. And also regarding the opening, I really like the animation on how it was done as well. It seems very abstract to the openings that we saw in season one of Blue Exorcist. Like it's very, very weird. It's very abstract. Like it has like shadows and everything and then different transitions. Like it's sort of different compared to the usual style of the openings that we saw in season one of opening. So I thought uh, of Blue Exorcist. So I thought that was really, really interesting. But yeah, my, my, my boy is Uberworld. So what happens in this first episode of Blue Exorcist season two, the Impure King arc well we are introduced to our original cast of characters uh that we know and love from uh, season one of blue exorcist and when it comes to the impure king arc the second season of blue exorcist 
I read the manga and this arc that is about to take place is actually pretty good. It's probably one of the better arcs in Blue Exorcist. I mean, if you have seen the other um, arcs in Blue Exorcist, you know, you would probably think, well, you know, I mean, they're okay. I don't really know if this one's going to be okay. Trust me, you're going to like this arc of Blue Exorcist that is coming up. It actually has a lot of character development in this arc as well. Now, the arc is composed of volumes 5 through 9, and I believe uh, Blue Exorcist Season 2's uh, schedule of episodes is around 12 to 13 episodes, somewhere around there, and I personally believe that they can actually uh, adapt all of these um, chapters of the manga into the anime for Blue Exorcist Season 2. So yeah, I really do believe that they can adapt all of these chapters from the Kyoto Impure King arc into only 12 to 13 episodes of the anime. I personally really believe that they can actually do that. The only thing that I will say is that I really do hope that they can at least keep this animation quality you know, going, and, uh, you know, when it comes to the adaptation of itself, I really hope that they execute everything down to the finer details regarding this arc. I really do hope that they can try to, you know, make this arc as best as it possibly can, because regarding some of the fight scenes that happen in the manga in this arc, it's actually really well done, and it's also character driven, so I'm expecting many good things to come about this arc. I just hope everything is executed correctly. So for example, Mr. Toto got his hands on the left eye of the Impure King and the right eye, he can then use them in order to resurrect the Impure King. King, of course, by a certain mantra of sorts, but nonetheless, if he had the two eyes and used the mantra, he would be able to summon the Impure King. Now, what exactly is the Impure King? The Impure King is a demon from way back in the day in which it would release a gaseous, nauseous, like, poison that could kill thousands and thousands of people. Now, a shaman back in the day uh, extinguished the uh, demon and took out its eyes for safekeeping due to the fact that, you know, he no longer wants to see, you know, uh, people getting killed by this sort of gas. They need to be um, enclosed in fine material so that way no one can get their hands on them. However, we know that Mr. Toto ends up getting his hands on the left eye of the uh, Impure King. And that is basically where our story begins with Blue Exorcist Season 2, the Impure King arc. Uh, we pretty much have it to where Toto is, you know, trying to look uh, for the right eye of the Impure King. He already has the left. All the other exorcists are trying the very best in order to locate his location uh, so that way they can stop him while we have also Rin and everyone else heading their way on to Kyoto. So, yeah. Regarding the arc to come, it's going to be very character-based, and it's also probably one of the better arcs of Blue Exorcist, I will say that. Now, at the end of Blue Exorcist Season 1, well, when it comes to the canon material, at least, we saw that, you know, Rin finally uh, sh showed off his true demon nature, you know, um, so that made it quite apparent that... Uh, to his friends at the time that he was a demon and at this given moment in time Shimi, Suguru, and you know his friends who he thought were his friends do not accept him as a demon They treat him you know very differently now So regarding what's gonna happen from here on out in the Impure King arc, this is why I say it's character based because it gives uh, further development with Rin and also various other um, character developments that, as you will see throughout this arc uh, and how exactly everything is resolved in the end. I just really quick wanted to say that, especially how this first episode came about, it was definitely funny to me that it's almost as if A1 Pictures completely ignored that they adapted a filler arc and Blue Exorcist Season 1. <laughs> I mean, come on, A1. We all know what happened in Season 1 of Blue Exorcist, how you chose to make Yukio a demon for some very odd and stupid reason that made no sense, and this is probably why the fact that the anime gets so much hate, because it just made 
no sense right at the halfway point. And don't get me wrong, this is the reason why, is because of the fact that the manga was still ongoing and it didn't have enough canon material to actually, you know, go on and be adapted in the anime. So what did the animation studio do? Well, they decided, hey, we gotta keep this show still going despite the fact, so we're gonna add some filler material but how they added the filler material was completely retarded I mean you just made Yukio a demon and yeah this is why the blue exorcist anime gets so much hate but hey at least they accepted their you know wrongdoings by you know having a scene where uh, Yukio has explained to Rin's friends that uh, yeah so Rin inherited all the powers of Satan and I am just left with nothing I'm a regular human boy <laughs> <laughs> it was just so funny how we have it to where A1 Pictures ends up going, you know, the route, a, a different route from the manga in season one. And then in season two, they're like, yeah, that never happened. Just ignore that, guys. You know, it, I think it's really commendable when a studio accepts their wrongdoings. I really do. So... I think that this was a pretty good adaptation of Blue Exorcist uh, regarding the Impure King arc. I just hope that they can adapt this, you know, execute it well. I mean, so far the animation is great. The soundtrack is awesome. The story so far, they are adapting fairly well. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that the characters are back from Blue Exorcist. You know, it's been over five years since the last anime, so it's been quite a while. So, but there's a lot of good things to come of this anime. I do think that A1 Pictures is, you know, going to do a very good job with this. So I'm leaving it in their hands and uh, we'll just hope for the best regarding this uh, season of Blue Exorcist. Let me know in the comments down below on what you guys thought about this review and also what did you think about your uh, first impressions of the second season of Blue Exorcist. Are you glad it is back? Uh, let me know just your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, hit that red subscribe button down below and you will never miss a video from me if you like anime and manga content, that is. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.